In the last video, we set up our application with state, actions, and reducers. In this video, let's learn how to use action creators with network requests. That is, how to make an API call when working with Redux. Now there are two packages that we need to install. The first one is Axios. Axios will be used to make get requests to an API endpoint. The second package we will be using is Redux Thunk. This is a package from the Redux ecosystem and is the standard way to define asynchronous action creators in your application. The Redux Thunk library basically is a middleware we will be applying to our Redux store. Now, rather than me first explaining theoretically, let us dive straight into the code to understand how to define an async action creator using Axios and Redux Thunk. The first step is to install the two packages. So in the terminal, run the command npm install axios redux hyphen thunk. The second step is to apply the Redux Thunk middleware to our Redux store. For that, at the top, first get hold of the apply middleware function from Redux. const apply middleware is equal to Redux dot apply middleware. Next, in the create store method, pass it as a second argument. The argument to apply middleware will be the thunk middleware. At the top, import it. const thunk middleware is equal to require redux thunk dot default. Pass this thunk middleware into apply middleware. The final step is to define our async action creator. I'm going to define a function called fetch users. So const fetch users is equal to an arrow function. And this is an action creator. And what we have learned so far is that an action creator returns an action. But what the thunk middleware brings to the table is the ability for an action creator to return a function instead of an action object. So return a function. Now what is special about this function is that it doesn't have to be pure. It is allowed to have side effects such as asynchronous API calls. And this function can also dispatch actions like the ones we have seen before. That is made possible because it receives the dispatch method as its argument. Now let's see how to make an Axios request and dispatch the necessary actions. First import Axios at the top. const Axios is equal to require Axios. For the request, we are going to be using JSON placeholder. The URL is jsonplaceholder.typeicode or typeicode.com. If you scroll down to resources and click on slash users, we get the URL endpoint for our get request. Back in VS Code, within this function body, axios.get and paste in the URL. If the request was successful, we get back the response. So add a then block, we get hold of the response. To keep the log simple, let's extract only the user IDs. So from response.data, we're going to map for each user, just the user ID. If the request failed, so dot catch, we get back an error. Error dot message 
is the error message. Similar to how response.data is the users. All right, we have made our Axios request. Now we dispatch the appropriate actions. Before we fire off our API call, we dispatch fetch users request. This action creator will basically set loading to true. When we get the response, we are going to dispatch fetch users success, passing in the list of user IDs. So when the request is successful, we dispatch fetch users action, which stores the users in our state. Similarly, if the request failed, we dispatch fetch users failure, passing in error.message, which will set the error message in our state. Finally, at the bottom, we subscribe to our store and dispatch this asynchronous action creator. So store.subscribe, where we are going to console log store.getState and in the next line, store.dispatch fetch users. In the terminal, if we now run the command node asyncactions.js, you should be able to see the logs. First, we have fetch users requested, and the state is now loading set to true. We then have fetch users succeeded, loading is false, and the users array is populated with the 10 user IDs. If I change the URL to an invalid URL and try this again, you can see we go from loading set to true to loading set to false, but with an error message. Request failed with status code 404. This is the error returned by the API. So this is pretty much how you write async actions in your application. You import the Redux thunk middleware and pass it to the create store function. What this allows is for an action creator to return a function instead of an action. The function can perform side effects such as asynchronous tasks. The function can also dispatch regular actions, which will then be handled by the red user. All right, with that, we come to the end of the features or concepts about the Redux library. Now that we know how the different parts move together and what the library is capable of, starting next video, let's learn about the Redux Toolkit library. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.